Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, one of the areas that a lot of GCSE students continue to struggle with is creative writing, how to craft a story that both includes lots of interesting and ambitious language and vocabulary, okay, remember this is your AO5 and AO6 skills, but also a story that has like a really nice and interesting thread and a narrative that's not too obvious, not too predictable, and definitely not cliched, okay, so never end with things like, and I woke up, it was all a dream, blah, blah, blah. So maintaining that balance between using ambitious language, having original story ideas, and even knowing what type of language to use as you're starting each section of your story, okay? Guys, if you follow this channel long enough, you will know that I always suggest to go for the story option. Of course, if you wanna do descriptive writing, go for it. But I think stories are really powerful. They also offer students lots of flexibility to start at one point and end at a different point. And there's so much you can weave into a story, okay? So of course, guys, what I want to offer within this lesson, especially as you gear up for your mock exams, is 10 useful phrases you can use in any story, especially to start yourself off through each section of a story. Okay, guys, remember that when it comes to a story, split your story and the development of your story into what I like to refer to as a story mountain. Okay, of course, you guys have heard of story mountains, especially in primary school. This is the story arc that all stories, including even films and so on, follow. Story mountain, I would suggest, split it into five separate paragraphs. So first paragraph is your beginning paragraph. This is where you introduce the characters, create a really interesting atmosphere, introduce the weather, and even use the weather to foreshadow uh, what might happen later. Of course, your second paragraph will be your build-up paragraph. This is where you have some kind of build-up, your character goes on an adventure, and also within this paragraph, what I usually suggest to my students is lull your readers into a false sense of security. What I mean by that is, as your character, you know, goes on this adventure, um, you know, they do something, create this sense of promise, create this sense that, oh, everything is going really well, because that then surprises your reader in your third paragraph, which is your problem paragraph. This is now where there's a sudden shift, okay? So use your build-up paragraph number two, lull your readers into a full sense of security. Then in your third paragraph, which is where you introduce the problem, the villain, the obstacle, and so on, then that's now where there can be a really nice contrast you can draw, okay? So your third par paragraph is your problem paragraph. Fourth paragraph is your resolution. This is how your story or, or your character resolves an issue. And of course, your fifth and final paragraph is your ending paragraph. As I said at the beginning, please avoid cliches. Please avoid things like, um, suddenly everything went dark, I woke up, it was all a dream, it's cliche, it's boring. Teachers do not want to see yet another essay using those types of cliche endings. Use interesting endings and within this lesson, what I'm gonna do is offer you guys 10 phrases that if you use from today in your stories, not only will you start seeing an improvement in your grades, not only will you see your teachers finding themselves drawn into your stories, but also you're now seamlessly integrating that ambitious language. Of course, guys, with these types of phrases, you could also obviously mold them into descriptive writing should you wish, wish to use them for your descriptive essays, okay? Now guys, of course, I'm gonna go over these phrases, use them to begin and also to develop your paragraphs, but if you wanna see more, make sure you join in my masterclasses, okay? So every Sunday at five till 6 p.m., I literally cover language paper one, language paper two, creative and descriptive writing, and I offer all of my students who are part of my masterclasses literal essays, which not only show how to develop a story using these phrases, but also additional phrases that they can use and incorporate into their own stories, okay? So make sure you sign up for those masterclasses should you wish to see more. Let's get into it with the first two phrases of my 10, which are phrases which I'd like to encourage you to use in your beginning paragraph, okay? With the beginning, I always suggest to students when it comes to especially a story, set the scene. Either use that scene to foreshadow what will happen later, or you can even set the scene from the start to lull your readers into a full sense of security. So use either this phrase or this other phrase, a choice of two, in your first sentence in your beginning paragraph, okay? So here, as you can see in the beginning, you could either create a dark atmosphere, okay, which foreshadows what could happen in the problem paragraph by stating and starting with, 
dark ragged clouds gathered in the sky this is really nice pathetic fallacy and i always suggest guys make sure you start off with pathetic fallacy integrate pathetic fallacy use weather okay lots of people think that they can you know convey a really negative mood by saying i felt really bad everything seems scary but actually a really nice and more sophisticated way of conveying a negative atmosphere or even a positive atmosphere is through weather and this is the positive phrase you could use to lull your readers into a false sense of security in your beginning paragraph Shimmering heat blazed down on two, blah, blah, blah. The desert, the city. Um, the shimmering heat, heat could also um, blaze through your windows in your room, right? And then they can gild everything in a golden sheen, okay? If you don't know the word gilded, it means golden. Again, guys, make sure you refer to my other videos where I talk about ambitious words you can use. You'll find that one of my favorite phrases is the word gilded, okay? So that's the first two phrases, okay? Use one or the other to set the scene, to either foreshadow using negative language and negative pathetic fallacy, or to lure your readers into a false sense of security. Whichever you go for, in your build-up, definitely solidify that false sense of security so there's a nice contrast, okay? So now in your build-up paragraph, talk about how. So here you could either use first or third person narrative. I usually prefer using first person, but of course you can change it to third person, okay? However, you could say, inhaling deeply, I filled my lungs with fresh air. This can happen anywhere, regardless of the setting. You can literally inhale deeply. You feel this sense of promise. Again, use your build-up to create this sense of promise, the sense that everything is going really well. Another phrase you should use is mentioning how it felt like, which obviously is a nice simile, it felt like one of those rare perfect days when. Rare perfect, especially rare, this is also nice use of hyperbole. Pay attention to the fact that I'm using ambitious language, but also I'm making use of interesting and powerful literary techniques. Pathetic fallacy, similes, hyperbole, all of that you need to weave into your story. So these two phrases, okay, so you've got the first two for your beginning paragraph, and then these next two are now where you are creating this full sense of security. Then in your problem paragraph, paragraph number three in your creative writing, you then switch. Now, instead of always switching in a really obvious way, right? Um, you know, mentioning, uh, suddenly I saw this dark figure, blah, 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 blah. Again, use weather as a really interesting thread that runs through your story. So in this case, use weather to now suddenly shift, right? In your build up, you had this really nice sense of promise, a sense of hope, and then now you are shocking your reader by saying, just then, a really nice way of switching the pace of your story, just then, squalling wind lashed down or lashed across me or lashed across the house, whatever. Squalling wind, by the way, squalling means like shouting. Really nice onomatopoeia. Also, in your problem paragraph, you could describe how you were registering what was before me. My heart tightened in my chest. So, guys, pay attention also to the fact that some of my sentences start with verbs. One of the errors that a lot of students tend to make is every single sentence in their creative or descriptive writing story starts with the, as, I. I looked around, I felt this, the house, the wind, the, um, as my heart tightened this and that, right? It's not a problem if you use as, the, I every so often, but if every single sentence in your story starts, starts with as, the, I, that's when your teachers start getting annoyed. That's when also you start losing originality in the way you are writing, okay? So those are two useful phrases to incorporate in your problem paragraphs. Then in your resolution, okay? So now this is where you have a denouement, right? This is how your um, character, your protagonist is now resolving this issue. This is now when maybe at this stage they've somehow resolved it and then you can use these phrases to convey that, okay? Then you could say, so now I would say, use this paragraph to show them uh, resolving and you could say, Scowling, grunting, and grimacing, rule of three, okay? These are verbs, right? So scowling, grunting, and grimacing, comma. I struggled for what, what felt like an eternity, or you could use suddenly, after an eternity, which is a metaphor, okay? Of course, guys, if you see some phrases or words that you don't understand, literally look them up, okay? This um, video is to give you guys some really useful phrases you can use, but if you see words, which I don't explain, that you don't understand, look them up and then try and include them in your writing, okay? This is how you start learning and incorporating and including ambitious language and ambitious words, okay? Then in your final ending paragraph, okay? So now this is where 
the issue has gone away. Maybe the villain has um, somehow disappeared or you've disarmed them or you've run out of the reach, right? Whatever it is, you can finish off your ending paragraph by stating, surveying the scene, nice sibilance here. Before me, my lower lip quivered, right? So now here you, you're showing the fallout, right? You're showing how you're feeling really frightened. You may be trembling, okay? So you're surveying, you're looking around, right? So surveying the scene before me, my lower lip quivered. Again, you can use this for any story, okay? You can just show that you, there's now this fallout and you're looking around, looking at all the carnage before you, right? Also, another good phrase for your ending paragraph is, slowing down, slowing from a pounding to a flutter, my racing heart quietened, okay? So instead of saying, oh, I suddenly felt relief, again, show not tell, right? So then you can describe indirectly how you started to calm down. Instead of saying, I suddenly felt like I could calm down, state instead, slowing from a pounding to a flutter. This is the your heart that was pounding in your chest. This heart that tightened in your chest. When you saw this obstacle in your third problem paragraph, suddenly now the threat is gone. Your heart can slow from a pound to a flutter, so this is a, you know, a little bit, you're still shaking a little bit, but not too shaken. And then you can say that your racing heart quietened, okay? So as I said, guys, I would like to recommend using these phrases in your practice creative essays. And of course, also you can use them in descriptive writing, okay? As long as you're really staying in one static place, because that's what descriptive writing is about. But also guys, if you want to see me develop these essays, right? You want to see more developed paragraphs. You, you just feel like you need to see a little bit more. How does that fit into a story, an example story that looks like a grade eight, grade nine answer? Just join in my masterclasses every Sunday from five to 6 p.m. We'll be going over creative writing, also language paper one, language paper two, things like letters, articles, speeches, and so on, okay? So guys, I hope you found this useful and thank you so much for watching.